Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I'll be teaching you how to make a mock neck sweater. Too much to say for this one, so I'll keep it brief. You've got some slick shoulder pads, textured balloon sleeves, and the fit is the comfiest. Speaking of, if you're looking for comfy crochet projects to make, look no further. You've got hundreds of modern crochet designs with much more coming, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 680 grams of yarn. That's 990 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5 and 6 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. And enter this week's padding giveaway by telling us if you like ice cream or frozen yogurt more. For me, it's gotta be ice cream, though I do enjoy a good froyo every now and again. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using four stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain, slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, and trinity stitch. This tutorial is for size small, but you can adjust it for your size and we explain that to in the video, so let's get started. Getting the sweater started, we're first going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our 6mm hook and start off by making an odd number chain that reaches from the base of our neck down to our waist. Now, I'm just going to make a sample size with you guys since I already have mine all finished up. But I do need to make a chain that is 12 and a half inches or 32 centimeters, so I made a chain of 45. And now that we have our chain, we're going to be doing a row of half double crochets. So start by blocking off that last chain, and then we're going to do a chain two. Now that chain two doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. And from here, we're going to half double crochet into that third chain from our hook, or the chain that we blocked off. So go ahead and bring your hook down into that chain. We're going to yarn over, pull through, and when we have those three loops on our hook, just yarn over and pull through all three. There's our first half double crochet, let's just do one more. We're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that following chain, pull through, and pull through all three. And that's it. Continue to put one half double crochet into every chain. So now that we made our way all the way down to the end of our row one, our following rows are just going to be back loop half double crochet, so let's just do the first few together. To start off each of these rows, we're going to chain two and flip our work. Now, our half double crochets are going to be done exactly the same way, so we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into that first available stitch's back loop, or the loop that's farthest away from us, with a half double crochet. There's our first, let's just do one more. Yarn over, into that following stitch's back loop, or the loop that's furthest away from us, and half double crochet. And that's it! From here we're just going to continue on repeating our back loop half double crochet row, with no increases and no decreases, until we get the width of the base of our neck. So starting at the edge of our neck, working across our chest to the other side of the edge of our neck, we're just going to do back loop half double crochets, with no increases and no decreases. And I'll meet you guys back right after we finish an even number row. Alright, so we are back, and my back loop half double crochet section is all finished up. I have a total of 16 rows, and this width is just about 7 inches, or 18 centimeters, and now we're going to get started on the side panel, which is going to be the trinity stitch. So all we're going to do, since we should have ended along the edge, is just chain 1, and then flip our work. So our first trinity stitch is always going to start with a single crochet into the last stitch from our previous row. And then we can get started with the trinity stitch portion. So we're all going to start by inserting our hook into that same stitch that that single crochet is in. And then we're going to pull through. 
Now we have two loops on our hook and we ultimately want to have four, so we're going to be doing the same things into the following two stitches. So into that next stitch, go ahead and insert your hook, pull through for three loops on our hook, and then into that next stitch, yarn over, pull through for a total of four. Now once we have those four loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over and pull through all four of those loops. And then to close off our trinity stitch, we're going to chain one. And now from here, from our second trinity stitch all the way down until we reach the last one, it's going to be the same. So to start the second one, we're going to insert our hook into the last stitch that our previous trinity stitch was worked into. So as you guys can see, this is the last stitch that our previous trinity stitch was worked into. So start by inserting your hook into there, pull through. We should have two loops on our hook. We're going to insert our hook into the following stitch, pull through, and then also into the stitch right after that, and pull through. And once we have those four loops, yarn over, pull through all four, and then chain one to close off this trinity stitch. Let's do this again. Into the last stitch that our previous trinity stitch is worked into, which is this one right here for me. I'm going to insert my hook into there, pull through, into that following stitch, pull through, and then into the stitch right after that, pull through, yarn over, pull through all four, and chain one to close this off. And it's just going to be a repeat of this previous trinity stitch, making our way all the way down until we have two stitches left. So let's just do one more a little bit quicker. So into the same stitch that our previous trinity stitch was worked into, pull through, next stitch, pull through, stitch after that, and pull through. Once we have all four of those loops, we're going to yarn over, pull through all four, chain one, and continue to do this until we only have two stitches left. Alright, so I'm back with my first trinity stitch row. I've made my way all the way down and I have one, two stitches left. And now we're going to do our last trinity stitch. So how this is going to work, it's going to start off the same exact way. We did a chain right after that previous trinity stitch we just finished. And we're going to insert our hook into that last stitch that our previous trinity stitch was worked into. Pull through into that following stitch. Pull through and then into the stitch right after that. And pull through. Now once we have all four of those loops on our hook, we're just going to yarn over, pull through all four, and then for the last one, instead of doing a chain one, we're going to single crochet into that same stitch that this trinity stitch has worked into. So into that same last stitch that our last trinity stitch has worked into, I'm just going to insert my hook into there with a single crochet. And that is how we're always going to close off our trinity stitch. And from here on out, it's just going to be our trinity stitches with no increases and no decreases until it reaches the outside of our arm. So I just want to end and get started on the following rows with you guys. But right before we do that, we're going to want to insert a stitch marker into the edge of this row right here, just so we know where the trinity stitch starts. So all I'm going to do is insert my stitch marker into the end of this row, so I know what my first trinity stitch row is. And from here, we're just going to chain one and flip our work. Now this is just going to be a really quick refresher. So for the first trinity stitch, we're always going to start it off with a single crochet into the last stitch from our previous row. And then the rest of the trinity stitch is going to be the same per usual. So start by inserting your hook into that same stitch that our single crochet is in. Pull through into that following stitch, pull through and then into the stitch right after that one. And pull through because we ultimately want four loops on our hook. Once we have all four, we're going to yarn over, pull through all four, and chain one to secure, and let's just do the second one together. Start by inserting your hook into that last stitch that our previous trinity stitch has worked into, pull through into that following stitch, pull through, and then into that next stitch, and pull through. Should have four loops on our hook, so yarn over and pull through all four. And from here, just chain one. And then from here, we're going to continue to do this until we have two stitches left. All right, so we've just made our way all the way down and we should all have two stitches left. So let's just close this off with the last one. So what we're going to do is start by inserting our hook into the last stitch that our previous trinity stitch was worked into. Pull through into that following stitch, pull through and then into the stitch right after that and pull through. 
Now once we have those four loops on our hook, just yarn over it, pull through all four, and then single crochet into the last stitch that this trinity stitch is worked into so that we get a nice and even edge. And that's it. We're just going to continue on with this row with no increases and no decreases. And a really quick tip, it might fit a little weird, but we will do a shoulder portion in just a little bit. So I'll meet you guys back once we have this side all finished up. All right, so I am back with my side panel, which was my Trinity Stitch rows, and I had a total of 16 rows just for the Trinity Stitch section. Now my width for that was just about six inches or 15 centimeters, or now I have a total width of about 13 and a half inches or 34 centimeters. And now what we're gonna do is do a little shoulder band. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is single crochet just across the top of the Trinity Stitch portion. We're gonna stop as soon as you reach our stitch marker. So what we're gonna do, since we're right here, is chain one, and working across the side of our Trinity Stitch section, alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row. So finding the first side row that we have, which is this one right here, we're gonna find that top loop and insert our hook into there with one single crochet. Now into that next side row, which is this one right here, we're gonna insert our hook into there with two single crochets. So there's one. And then into that same side row, there is my second. And that's what we're gonna do until we reach our stitch marker. Let's do this again. We're gonna find that next side row, which is this one right here for me. Insert your hook into there with one single crochet. And then finding that next side row, insert your hook into there with two single crochet. So there's one. And then into that same side row with two. And continue to do this until we reach our stitch marker and then I'll meet you back. All right, so now that we have just single crocheted across the top of our Trinity stitch section, we're now gonna make a chain that reaches up to the top of our shoulder, making sure that it ends on an even number. So I've already measured mine now. I need just about two and a half inches or six centimeters. So I'm just gonna start by making a chain of 10. And now that we have our chain, we're gonna be doing half double crochets all the way down. So start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain two. And then into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook, start with our first half double crochet. And then just put one half double crochet into every stitch until we reach the base. So connecting it into the base is gonna be pretty simple. What we're gonna do is count up the next two available stitches and then slip stitch into that second stitch. So this is my first stitch right over here. Here's one, here's two. Into that second stitch, I'm gonna insert my hook, yarn over and pull through everything. And now my first row is nice and attached. Now I do need to work our way up to the following row and how we're gonna do that is slip stitch up just one stitch. So this is my next stitch into the base. Do one slip stitch into there and then flip our work. And after our work is flipped, we already know how to do this part. We're gonna be putting one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. Now this portion isn't gonna have any increases or decreases. So when we reach the end of the row, chain two, flip our work and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch again. And then I will meet you back just to remind you how we're gonna be connecting it into the base. So now that we've made our way all the way down with our third half double crochet row, we're gonna to need to connect it into the base just once more and it's gonna be done exactly the same way that we did the first row. So just as a refresher, we're gonna count up the next two available stitches and then slip stitch into that second. So here's the first available stitch, here's the second. We're going to slip stitch into there just to connect this third row. And then to work our way up to the following row, we're gonna slip stitch up just that next available stitch, flip our work, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. And that's it. From here, we're just going to continue to repeat those two rows, making our way all the way down until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, and then do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so I am back and my shoulder band is all finished up and I did already do a chain up of one and cut. Now from here, we're just going to repeat everything we just did here, plus the shoulder band on the other side so I'm just gonna show you guys where to insert your hook and then let you guys do the rest on your own. So all we're gonna do is insert our hook into the top corner, so the same corner that the shoulder band is on or the opposite corner from our tail end and then we're just gonna repeat the same amount of Trinity stitch rows, our single crochet row along the top of just the Trinity stitch portion 
and then our shoulder band. Once we have all that all finished up, I will meet you guys back so we can get started on the back panel. All right, so I am back and the entirety of my front panel is all finished. The total width that I have is 19 and a half inches or 49 centimeters. And now we're gonna get started on our back panel, which is gonna be pretty simple because it's all just gonna be back loop half double crochet rows. So what we're gonna need to first do when it comes to doing our back panel is we're gonna make a chain for the same amount of total stitches that we have for our last row for our front panel and that is including the shoulder band. So if you guys have my numbers, I have a total of 55 stitches. So I'm going to make a chain of 55, chain two, flip our work, and then put one half double crochet into every chain, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch for the same amount of rows that we have for the front panel. So if you guys have my numbers, I have a total of 16 rows for my side panel, 16 rows for my middle half double crochet detail, and then another 16 rows for the other side panel. So altogether, that's going to be a total of 48 back loop half double crochet rows for me. Once when I have mine finished up, I'm going to do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you guys back so you can seam everything together. So we are back, and now we have both our front and back panel all finished up, and now we're ready to seam our shoulders. So first things first, we're going to want to place the front panel on top of our back panel, and then we're going to place our 6mm hook into the corner stitch of both the front and back panel. Insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. And all we're gonna do from here is put one single crochet into every side row that we have, making sure we're working in through both the front and the back panel at the same time. So let's get this started. As you guys can see, this is my first side row within the front panel, so I'm gonna insert my hook into that top loop. And then I'm gonna find that same top loop within the back panel, insert my hook into there, and then I'm going to single crochet them together. And if you guys want to, I do like to place my tail ends on top of the loops that I inserted my hook into so that the tail ends can be in the middle of the single crochet so we don't have to deal with them later. But once we have that, all we're gonna do is just yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So a regular single crochet. Let's do this again. Start by finding the following side row within the front panel and then find the following side row within the back panel. Insert your hook into that top loop and then single crochet them together. And then that's it. We're just gonna continue to do this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into within the front panel. Do a chain up a one and cut and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. So now that both of our shoulders are all seamed up, the next thing we're going to seam is our sides. So first things first, we're going to need to make sure that our work is swept wrong side out, meaning the seam that we have for the shoulder is still along the outside. And then we're gonna be inserting our stitch marker into any stitch where we want our armhole to start. Now I would like for mine to be balloon sleeves. So I inserted my stitch marker about right where my under bust is. And that's just about eight and a half inches or 22 centimeters from the top. And I inserted my stitch marker into the 30th stitch. And from there, all we're gonna do is insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel and then do a single crochet seam. So let's get this started. Start by inserting your yarn onto your hook. We're gonna pull through and then do a chain up of one to secure. And then from here, all we're gonna do is find that first available stitch within the front panel, insert your hook into there. Next available stitch within the back panel, insert your hook into there, and then just single crochet them together. And that's it. We're just gonna continue to do this until we reach our stitch marker. Once when we do, go ahead, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. All right, so now that everything is all seamed up, we're ready to get started on our sleeve. So first things first, we're going to need to make sure that our work is slipped right side out now, meaning all the seams that we have are along the inside. And then we're gonna be inserting our six millimeter hook into the stitch that we have that's nearest to our side seam. And then once we have that, we're gonna be making another odd number chain, the length that we'd like for our sleeve to be. Now I'd like for my sleeve to be just about 16 inches or 41 centimeters, so I'm gonna start by making a chain of 55. All right, so now that we have our chain, all we're gonna do is do our Trinity stitches, making our way all the way back with no increases and no decreases. So go ahead and do your Trinity stitch until we don't have any more chains left to work into, and then I'll meet you guys back to show you how we're gonna connect it into the base. And now that I made my way all the way down with my Trinity stitch row, we're gonna to need to connect it into the base. 
So start by finding that next available stitch, which this is mine right here, and all I'm going to do is slip stitch into there to attach this first row. And now that one's all done. Now just to work our way up to the following row, we're going to find that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch into there, we're going to flip our work, and then do our trinity stitch, making our way all the way back down again, and then that's it. From there, we're just going to continue to keep repeating these two rows, making sure that we're connecting it into the base the same way that we just did, until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, into the base. I'll meet you guys back once we don't, so that we can seam everything together. So I have finally made my way all the way around with my Trinity Stitch Sleeve. We don't have any more stitches left to work into, and now we're going to seam everything together. So first things first, we're going to want to make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out, so that all of our seams can be along the inside. Next, we're going to be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then we're going to pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And now from here, we're going to do a single crochet seam, so the same seam that we did for the sides. And since we already know how to do that, let's just do the first one together. So start by finding that first stitch into the front panel and insert your hook. After that, find that next available stitch into the back panel, insert your hook into there, and then single crochet them together. That's it. Let's do this again into that next stitch into the front panel, insert your hook, next stitch into the back panel, insert your hook, and single crochet. And then that's it. We're going to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, and when we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so now that our sleeve is all seamed up, the next thing we're going to start working on is our cuff. So first things first, make sure that our work is flipped right side out, and then we're going to be inserting our five millimeter hook into any one of the side rows that we have along the bottom of our sleeve. Next, we are going to insert our yarn onto our hook. We're gonna pull that through and then do a chain up of one to secure. And then because our sleeve is a little bit wide, we're going to need to cinch it. So we're gonna start by doing a decrease of two into every two side rows. So let's get that started. Now let's all start by finding our first side row, which this is mine right here. I'm gonna insert my hook into that top loop yarn over and pull through. And then I'm gonna find my next side row and then insert my hook into that top loop. Yarn over and pull through. Now once we have those three loops on our hook, we're just gonna yarn over and pull through all three. And that's how we do our decrease of two single crochets. Let's do that again. Start by inserting your hook into that next available side row. Insert in through that top loop. Pull through. Insert your hook into that following side row's top loop. Yarn over, pull through, and when we have those three loops, yarn over and pull through all three. And then that's it. We're just going to continue to do this, making our way all the way around. Once we don't have any more stitches left to work into, slip stitch into that chain space, and then I will meet you back. Alright, so now that our single crochet row is all finished up, the next thing we're going to do is make a chain the length that we would like for our cuff to be. Now I'd like for my cuff to be just about 3 inches, or 8 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 15. And now that we have our chain, we're going to be doing a slip stitch row all the way back down. So start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain one. Now that chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. And then into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert our hook. And then once we have those two loops, all we're going to do is yarn over and pull through both of those loops. That is our first slip stitch. Let's do this again. Into that next chain, go ahead and insert your hook, yarn over, and pull through everything. And that's it. We're just going to continue to do this, making our way all the way down. And a really quick tip that I have when it comes to doing our slip stitches is once we finish every stitch, make sure that we're not accidentally tugging too tightly on our working yarn. Otherwise, the falling row can be a little too tight to work into. But continue to do this until we reach the base. And now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we need to connect it into the base. So all we're going to do is find that next available stitch that we have into the base. We're going to insert our hook into there with a slip stitch to close off this first row. And then just to work our way up to the following row, we're going to find that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch into there, and then flip our work. And now we're going to be doing back loop slip stitches to get a really pretty and stretchy ribbing. So we're going to find that first available stitch from our previous row and insert our hook into that back loop. And then we're going to gently yarn over and pull through everything, remembering not to tug too tightly after every stitch. We're just going to continue to do this until we reach the end of the row.
And now that we're at the end of our row two, just to get started on our row three, since we're along the outer edge, all we're gonna do is chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and I will meet you back at the base just once more. And now that we've made our way all the way down to the end of our row three, just to connect it once more, we're gonna find that next available stitch into the base and slip stitch it into there. And now our row three is all closed off. And then just to work our way up to our following row, which is our row four, slip stitch up that following stitch into the base, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and then that's it. Just continue to repeat our two previous rows with no increases and no decreases. And when we don't have any more stitches left to work into, I will meet you guys back so we can seam everything together. All right, so now that we've made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows, we don't have any more stitches left to work into. So now we're just gonna do an outside loop slip stitch seam. And that's gonna be pretty easy. We're all gonna start by making sure that our work is still flipped right side out. Now, right after that, we're gonna be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then we're gonna yarn over and pull through everything. And then just to get the first few started, we're gonna start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel and then we're gonna insert our hook only in through that front loop. And then we're gonna find that next available stitch into the back panel and only insert our hook in through that back loop. And then once we have all three of those loops on our hook, we're gonna yarn over and pull through all three. Let's do this again. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert your hook in through that front loop. Into the next stitch into the back panel, insert your hook in through that back loop, yarn over and pull through all three. And that's it. We're gonna to continue to do this, making our way all the way down. When we don't have any more stitches left to work into, go ahead and do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so now that we have just finished up both of our sleeves and cuffs, the next thing we're gonna do is our bottom band. So first things first, make sure that our work is still flipped right side out and we're gonna insert our five millimeter hook into any one of the side rows that we have along the bottom of our piece. And now the next thing we're gonna do is just do a single crochet row. So start by inserting your yarn onto your hook. We're gonna pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And all we're gonna do for this is put one single crochet into every side row that we have, including the Trinity stitches. So let's just get the first few started. We're gonna start by finding our first side row, which is this one right here. Insert your hook into there with a single crochet. Find your following side row, which this is mine right here. Insert your hook into there with a single crochet as well. And we're just gonna to continue to do this, making our way all the way around and then slip stitch into that chain space. All right, so our single crochet row is all finished up and now we're going to do another slip stitch band just like how we did the cuff. But from here, all we're gonna do is make a chain the length that we'd like for our bottom band to be. Now I'd like mine to be about two inches or five centimeters. So I'm gonna start by making a chain of 10. And now that I have my chain, just like how we did our cuff, we're going to block off that last chain do a chain one and then into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, insert with a slip stitch. And then we're gonna be putting one slip stitch into every chain. And then from there, we're just gonna to continue to repeat our back loop slip stitch rows with absolutely no increases and no decreases, making our way all the way around. When we don't have any more stitches left to work into, I'll meet you guys back just so we can seam it together. All right, so now that we've made our way all the way around with back loop slip stitch rows, we don't have any more stitches left to work into. So now we're going to seam and this is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam. So the same seam that we did for the cuff. So since we already know how to do that one, let's just do the first one together. So we're gonna start by making sure that our work is slipped right side out. And then we're gonna be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel, yarn over and pull through everything. And just to do the first one, we're gonna find that first available stitch into the front panel and insert our hook only in through that front loop. And then we're gonna find that next available stitch into the back panel and insert our hook only in through that back loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops. And then that's it. We're gonna to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into and then do a chain up of one and cut. So now that our bottom band is all seamed up, the last thing that we're gonna to have to do is our collar. So the first thing that we are going to want to do is make sure that our work is flipped right side out. And then we're gonna be inserting our six millimeter hook now into any one of the side rows that we have along the back panel. And then we're going to do a single crochet row around it. 
So we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook and pull through to a chain up of one to secure. And when it comes to doing our collar, we're going to be alternating between one to two single crochets into every side row that we have. So let's just do the first set. So we're all going to start by inserting our hook into that first side row that we have, which is this one right here for me, and then insert with a single crochet. Find our next side row, which is this one right here. Insert your hook into there with two single crochets. So there's one, and then there's two, and then that's it. We're just going to continue to alternate between one and two single crochets into every side row. And then once we reach the front panel, we have a couple regular stitches to work into. So just put one single crochet into each of those. And just continue to make our way all the way around until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. And then slip stitch into that chain space. And now that we've made our way all the way around with our single crochet row, the next thing we're going to start working on is our mock neck. So start by making a chain the length that we'd like for our mock neck to be. Now I would like for my mock neck to be just about 3 inches or 8 centimeters. So I'm going to start by making a chain of 13. And our mock neck is going to be done exactly the same way as our bottom band and as our cuff. So once we have our chain, we're just going to block off that last chain, do a chain one, and then into that chain that we blocked off with a second chain from our hook, insert with a slip stitch, and just make our way all the way down, putting one slip stitch into every chain. From there, we're going to be connecting it into the base the same way that we did for the bottom band and for the cuff, and then we're just going to be doing rows of back loop slip stitches with no increases and no decreases, making our way all the way around. And once we make our way all the way around, I'll meet you guys back just to remind you how we're going to seam it all together. All right, so we've just made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows. We don't have any more stitches left to work into, so now we're just going to seam everything together. So just like how we seamed our cuff, we're going to start by making sure that our work is still flipped right side out. And then we're going to be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Once we have that, we're going to yarn over and pull through everything. And just to get this started, we're going to start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel and inserting our hook into that front loop. And then find that first available stitch into the back panel, insert your hook into that back loop, yarn over and pull through all three, and then that's it. Continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. Alright guys, so I'm back and I have just finished up seaming my mock neck and I am all done. Last thing we're going to have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are all down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.